السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, the Prophet Jesus may peace be upon him, Isa عليه السلام Who was he? And what exactly happened when he was born? How was he born? So we want to go through a few of these details and I will pause every time in order to draw lessons and at the same time I will try my best to ensure that whatever I've said is from the Quran so that uh, we can understand what Islam says clearly from revelation within the Quran of Isa alayhi salatu wassalam. So we take a look at the grandmother of Jesus, may peace be upon him, from his mother's side. So, the mother of his mother. The Quran refers to her as Imra'a to Imran, the wife of Imran. The Quran says, This woman was a very pious woman and she made a promise uh, that if Allah were to bless me with a child, I will dedicate that child to Allah. Uh, I will actually dedicate this child in my belly for you, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dedicated for his cause. So accept it from me. And this is what she is saying. Uh, and then when she gave birth, Allah says, When she gave birth to a female child, she was surprised, but she fulfilled the vow. Pause for a moment. If you look at vows in Islam, uh, and I'm fast forwarding to the rulings of the Sharia that we follow, brought by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you look at vows, uh, when you make a vow that, oh Allah, if you do this, I will do this. If you do that, I will do this. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, wa innama min al A vow doesn't bring about the goodness, but it's actually extracting a good deed from uh, a person who is miserly or stingy to do good deeds. So we shouldn't treat Allah by making the general vows, right? General vows meaning, if I pass my exams, then I will read Ayatul Kursi. Allah says, just read Ayatul Kursi. Uh, meaning, do what you want, the act of worship, and make dua to Allah, ask Him. Instead of, uh, you know, playing this game or saying to Allah, you do this, I'm going to do this. Allah doesn't need you and I. Allahul uh, Ghani wa Antumul Fuqara. Allah is independent. You are the ones who are dependent on Him, you and I. So we should rather do the deed uh, as a charity or whatever. But if you do make a vow, then you should fulfill it. So to make a vow is makruh. Makruh meaning it's detested. It's not a good idea. But if you have made one, you won't be sinful, but you should fulfill it. So if you say, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this for me, then I'm going to read, uh, for example, uh, two units of prayer. So subhanAllah, as much as it was uh, makruh, you know, you should have read the two units of prayer and prayed to Allah, supplicated to Allah. But if that thing happened, you would have to do those two units of prayer. So uh, in the case of uh, Imra'a to Imran, the wife of Imran, the grandmother of Jesus, may peace be upon him, from his mother's side, the mother of Maryam, alayha salatu uh, wassalam. She uh, obviously just wanted to dedicate her child. Okay, uh, It wasn't that type of a vow that I mentioned now, but it was just to say, oh Allah, I'm going to dedicate my child for you. And it was a promise. So she fulfilled this promise when the child was born. Notice she was already expecting, according to the Quran, uh, you know, to say, Inni nadartu laka ma fi batni. That what is in my belly right now, in my womb right now, I'm dedicating that to you. Or I promise you that I'm going to dedicate it to you. So, when the child was born, it was a female. And there were a lot of miracles surrounding the birth of the child. That was Mary, may peace be upon her. Uh, Maryam alayhi salam, the mother of Isa alayhi salam. And so what happened is, they... Uh, they wanted, they dedicated her to the place of worship, uh, you know, perhaps a monastery, uh, the place of worship, and people started scrambling to take care of her. So the Quran mentions that, and uh, the Quran speaks about how they drew lots in order to decide who is going to 
uh, raise this child, okay? So, or who is going to uh, look after the affairs of this child while the child is actually in the monastery? And it so happened that Zakaria, uh, salam, was the one who was chosen for that task uh, through the drawing of lots. And this is as per the Quranic version. Like I said, we're going to try and stick to the Quranic version. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ إِذْ يُلْقُونَ أَقْلَامَهُمْ أَيُّهُمْ يَكْفُلُ مَرْيَمْ وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ إِذْ يَخْتَصِمُونَ Allah is informing us through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, telling Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you were not there when they were drawing lots as to who should take care of Maryam and when they were arguing. Here we are telling it to Amazing. you. Amazing. And thereafter, Zakaria alayhi salam used to uh, bring food for this girl child who was dedicated to this place of worship. And she used to sit in what was known as the mihrab, you know, the place of worship. And subhanallah, subhanallah, amazingly, whenever he used to go in with food, sometimes he used to find a plate of off-season fruit, fruit that was there that was not in season. And he used to ask her, where did you get this from? I mean, who brought you this food? Because it's not from our area. It's not even in season right now. What are you doing with this? So she would say, uh, Allah has provided, subhanAllah. You know, the Quran makes mention of this in a beautiful way, where it says that Zakaria alayhi salam asked her, Anna laki hadha? Qalat huwa min indillahi. Uh, you know, this is from Allah. In Allah, Allah, Allah gives whomsoever He wishes without uh, limits, no limits, you know, no accounts. He can give you anything. There is nothing impossible for Allah. So when Zakaria alayhi salam heard this, he actually uh, was, uh, you know, uh, mashallah, motivated to, to make a dua to Allah again. Uh, because he didn't have male offspring and he wanted that offspring. So he says, Oh Allah, habli min ladunka dhurriyatan tayyibatan. Oh Allah, grant me a pious child, you know, a progeny, someone who's going to carry on my lineage and so on. So uh, when he saw that if Allah gave Maryam alayhi salam something that was off season, I am a little bit old now, perhaps my wife is old, I may not, uh, we may not be from a human aspect thinking we can conceive. But we need to make dua to Allah because he can do anything. So he made dua to Allah and uh, Allah says in the Quran, it's not our topic today, but Allah says in the Quran that his dua was answered and Yahya was born, alayhi salam. And it was an amazing story anyway. But now if we go back to Maryam, a day came when Jibreel, alayhi salam, came to her in that place of worship and and he was in the form of a man. She was very frightened because no one used to come in there that way. And he came in and he told her not to be frightened. And she made a dua to say, Oh Allah, protect me. You know, if you intend to harm me, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deal with you and, and so on. And so this uh, Jibreel alayhi salam says, No, I'm an angel. I'm actually, I've come to you to inform you of a child. Allah is giving you good news of the birth of your child. My child, no man has touched me. How can I have a child? So the Virgin Mary, Maryam alayhi salam, she was a virgin. We also say the Virgin Mary. Uh, she was never married. So Islam does not agree with the narrative of Joseph being the husband of Mary and so on. She was never married. And she suddenly was expecting. How was she giving birth? Meaning, how was she expecting? when no one touched her. So Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was the statement, the word that Allah said, subhanAllah, the instruction. What was the word? The word was be, and it is. Now some people try to create a bit of confusion saying, oh, Jesus was the word of Allah, so you know, he was a part of Allah, you know, or what was he and so on. Actually that word that Allah refers to, kalimatullahi, uh, the word of Allah, meaning Allah said be, and he was just like what happened at the time of Adam, at the time of Eve, at the time of Jesus. May peace be upon them all. So Allah says, "Inna mathala Isa inda Allah kamathali Adam." You know, Allah says uh, the example of Jesus is similar to the example of Adam. We created him in a certain way. We said "be," and he was. So what was the word? If someone says, "What was the word?" The word was "be," and you know, "be" meaning "kun," "be." So he was, so it was. 
That's very interesting. Miraculous, no father, no involvement. Allah creates in four different ways. No male, no female. That was the example of Adam, may peace be upon him. Through a male without the involvement of a female was the creation of Eve or Hawa alayhi salam. Through a female without the involvement of a male and that was Jesus, may peace be upon him. And through male and female, that's you and I. So all the pro probabilities and possibilities have happened in history. Allah proved to us that He is the Creator. He can do what He wants. He can create what He wants, how He wants, when He wants, and He can do what you might term impossible. It's not impossible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when she was expecting, she obviously didn't know how to face her people. So the same angel says, uh, whenever a person comes to you, فَإِمَّا تَرَيِنَّ مِنَ الْبَشَرِ أَحَدًا If you see any from humankind, فَقُولِي You should tell them, إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَنِ صَوْمًا فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيًا Today, I have promised Allah that I am not going to speak. So, subhanallah, subhanallah. So I'm not going to say a word to any human being. And... Allah instructed her to point towards the child. When, when the child was born, now obviously it's very difficult. Allah told her not to speak because by her speaking, who's going to believe her? By her speaking, it might make matters worse. This is not the first time that Allah is saying to someone that remain silent. Subhanallah. We are taught, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمُتْ Whoever believes in Allah in the last day, say good or remain silent. Many people actually speak a whole load of nonsense and that which they don't realize or may result in their downfall on the day of judgment. Allah is going to take account. We say things about people, we accuse people, we, we haven't seen evidence against people and we accuse them and we, we're ready to spread gossip and rumor and destroy people's lives. And we don't even mind. And here Allah is telling someone who was right to say, listen, keep quiet. Tell them, I'm not speaking today. Subhanallah. Allah will take care of your problem and your matter through his own miracle, miraculous way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, ilayhi. She pointed towards this child when he was born. Now, I obviously skipped a little bit uh, as to how he was born. There is, uh, the Quran makes mention of some detail there where she, it was so difficult and the, the, the labor pains and how the angel came to tell her, don't worry, uh, you know, Allah is with you and, you know, uh, things will be made easy and, uh, you know, she should uh, hold the trunk of the palm and shake it in a certain way so that, the, 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 the dates would actually fall and it would help her to eat as well as to give birth and so on. So she gave birth and then uh, she pointed at the child. And what happened? This is something that is not mentioned in the Christian texts. That Jesus, may peace be upon him, spoke when he was a baby. When he was in the cradle, he spoke. What did he say? إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ آتَانِيَ الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيًّا وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُ وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّا وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا Allah says, he spoke saying, I am the worshipper of Allah. I'm Abdullah. Allah has given me the book and he has made me a prophet and he has blessed wherever I go. He has blessed me wherever I go. And he has instructed me to pray and to give charity. For as long as I'm alive and to be faithful, dutiful, dutiful uh, to my mother. Uh, and he has not made me one of the tyrants and so on. So he said a, a few sentences with this meaning and that was a miracle. People were quiet. People actually uh, were silenced and they now knew that there is something far greater than what we uh, would have thought that has happened here. And so this was Isa. Allah says, ذَلِكَ Isa ibn Maryam قَوْلَ الْحَقِّ الَّذِي فِيهِ يَمْتَرُونَ They were doubting. In so many things, this is the true statement.
Allah says, that's the true statement. So at the beginning, notice how there was a miraculous birth without the involvement of a male through the miracle of Allah. Now, that doesn't make Jesus, may peace be upon him, the son of Allah uh, as per the Quranic teaching. We're all creatures of Allah. You know, we're all created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're all dependents of Allah. But at the same time, meaning we depend on him. But you, to say Jesus is the son of Allah would require you to say that Adam was the first one and then Eve and then what about the others and so on. So Allah says that he is not the son of God, you know, uh, nor is he God, nor is he a part of a trinity. So those are the Islamic teachings. Allah says it quite clearly. Uh, don't say three. Don't say a trinity. There is no trinity. Allah says, Intahu lakum. Stop it. It's better for you. You know, that's what Allah says in the Quran. Ilahun wahid. Your Lord is one. Your creator is one. Supreme deity who created everything. Worship him alone. And this is why Allah makes mention of things later on. But right at the beginning, this was the birth. Jesus, may peace be upon him, then sent to the people, the Romans. He was not sent to entire mankind like Muhammad Sallallahu but he was sent to his people, Banu Israel. And these people, subhanAllah, uh, Banu Israel, uh, the children of Yaqub, you know, the, Israel is another name for the Prophet Jacob, may peace be upon him. He was also known as Israel. So when we say the children of Israel, we're talking of the children of Yaqub, may peace be upon him. And from among them were messengers, so many, and Musa alayhi salam, Moses and Aaron, and who, a lot of others. And uh, subhanAllah, they're all from the progeny of the Prophet Ibrahim, Abraham. So these are all Abrahamic. And they continued the same uh, message of oneness, the Tawheed. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of Jesus, may peace be upon him, telling his people, worship your Lord alone and my Lord alone, the one and only. Uh, and Allah says, we will question him on the day of judgment. We will ask him, oh Jesus, did you tell the people to worship you and your mother? And he will say, no way. I would have never done something that you didn't mandate me to say and that was untrue, you know. So that's, uh, that's a verse of the Quran where Allah says, أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ إِتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّيَ إِلَهَيْنِ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Are you the one who told the people to worship you and your mother besides the maker? So he would say, he is, he will say, uh, no, I didn't, you know, subhanak. مَا يَكُونُ لِي أَنْ أَقُولَ مَا لَيْسَ لِي بِهِ بِحَقِّ It's something that's not true, something that I don't have the right to say because it's untrue. I didn't say that at all. In fact, I told them, uh, Allah, you know, worship Allah alone. There is none worthy of worship besides Him. Your Lord and my Lord is Allah, you know. So uh, what happened? As Jesus, may peace be upon Him, delivered the message, He was also persecuted. He suffered a lot of persecution. And, uh, you know, they were, the, he was a very, very kind person. He taught them that Allah is one. He taught them about the hereafter. He taught them about uh, the last day, the hereafter, uh, heaven and hell, meaning Jannah and Jahannam, the angels, the previous prophets, the books. In fact, he even taught them about the coming prophet. The Quran says that Jesus, may peace be upon him, told the people that after me, there will be a comforter. There will be a messenger who is going to come by the name of Ahmed. Ahmed is the praised one. And Muhammad is exactly the same name. Uh, Ahmed and Muhammad are actually taken from the same root. So uh, Allah makes mention of this. Mubashiran bi rasul ya'ti min ba'd ismuhu Ahmed. That when Isa alayhi salam came, he gave glad tidings of a messenger who would come later, whose name was Ahmed. So, uh, when, when Muhammad came finally and he brought the clear signs, the people of Quraysh just said, well, you know what, this is magic. And even some of the Christians had, had just denied him and said no. Yet it was a, a fulfillment of the prophecy or the, the news given by Isa alayhi salam of what was going to happen later on. Now, if you look at the Quran, Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ uh, You know, when the, in fact, when Allah said to Isa, alayhi salam, that, you know, count my favors upon you. إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمَ أُذْكُرْ نِعْمَتِي عَلَيْكَ وَعَلَى وَالِدَتِكَ You know, uh, 
uh, remember the, the, the favors that I blessed you and your, and your mother with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ أَيَّتُكَ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ when I, when I helped you, when I assisted you uh, with Ar-Ruh Al-Qudus, you know, uh, the, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues actually to say, إِذْ أَيَّتُكَ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ تُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَهْدِ وَكَهْلًا uh, Allah says that you spoke to the people in, from the cradle and even at a later age, you know, فِي الْمَهْدِ وَكَهْلًا إِذْ عَلَّمْتُكَ الْكِتَابِ Remember when I taught you the book, so he was given a revelation, al-hikmah, he was given wisdom, al-tawrah, he was given the Old Testament, al-injil, Allah gave him all of this, so he knew everything, the, the Old Testament, uh, the Torah, uh, the, 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 the Bible, it's, it's actually called al-injil in the Arabic language, and that injil is referring to the original manuscripts that the Muslims believe are lost, and they were somehow misplaced, because what the Muslims say is later on what happened is uh, the, the, the books of what is termed the Bible now were not written by Jesus, may peace be upon him, but rather by disciples, by the others. So if you look at exactly what was from Jesus, may peace be upon him, saying that this is from Allah, it is very, very little that you will find in what is today termed as the New Testament. So uh, this is just an Islamic, I'm only letting you know what uh, Islam teaches and what the Muslims believe. And then uh, Isa alayhi salatu was salam, he could actually create a little, uh, a, 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 what can I say, he would create a image of the bird from stone, like sculpture it out of stone, more like a small idol sort of a thing. And he would blow into it by the will of Allah and it would have life. It would be given life by Allah and start flying. So Allah mentions that in the Quran, you know. تَخْلُقُ مِنَ الطِّينِ كَهَيْئَةِ الطَّيْرِ You make from uh, the, the teen, you know, the, the, the soil and the earth, كَهَيْئَةِ uh, الطَّيْرِ Something similar to a bird, you know. And تَنْفُخُ فِيهِ And you blow into it and by the will and permission of Allah and the power of Allah, it comes to life and flies off. That was a miracle of Jesus. Similarly, another miracle was uh, the leper would be cured just by, just by the touch of Jesus, may peace be upon him. The Quran says that. The Quran says that, uh, you know, a lot of food came from heaven given by Allah in the laid tablecloth. Some say it was the last supper. And, and uh, there was so much blessings in the little that was there that it actually... Uh, became so much and fed thousands of people. So that is also mentioned in the Quran of the miracles of Jesus, may peace be upon him. No Muslim is ever allowed to say the name Jesus without saying peace be upon him immediately after that, intentionally. Which means if you mistakenly did that, it's okay. But intentionally, you can't leave that peace be upon him out. You say Isa alayhi salam in Arabic and in English, Jesus, may peace be upon him. And in the same way, we would be disturbed and we would be hurt by people making a mockery or a joke of uh, Muhammad وسلم, We would also be hurt if anyone made a mockery of Jesus, may peace be upon him, or of Moses, may peace be upon him. It would hurt our feelings and it would definitely hurt us in a big way because we consider all of that sacred and all of them uh, really amazing, not just role models, but prophets of Allah. They were they were people who had a very, very high status and rank. So that's Jesus, may peace be upon him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then also says that the dead would come alive. You know, at that time, there was the height of medicine. And people used to uh, boast and brag about their, uh, their knowledge of medicine. But no one could bring someone who had died already to life. And Jesus, may peace be upon him, did that by the will of Allah. So a person who had died and by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, either through the touch or through blowing, this person came alive. And this wasn't just once, but Allah says, we gave you the ability to do that. We gave you the power to do that, subhanAllah. So Allah makes uh, mention of this in the Quran as well. Amazing miracle of Jesus, may peace be upon him. And then we have right at the end, when 
they persecuted him a lot and the Romans came in and they wanted to harm him and they wanted to destroy him. They wanted to murder him and so on. And a traitor actually led them to the enclosure where he was. And Islam, the Quran says that at that point, Allah raised him to the heavens as he was, body and soul raised to heavens in a miraculous way. Just like he was born in a miraculous way, he was also raised in a miraculous way. So the Muslims believe that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam did not die, nor was he crucified. He is not dead, nor was he crucified. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَا لَهُمْ They did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but it was made uh, confusing for them. So what was confusing? They, they crucified someone else who looked like Jesus and the, the faces were made similar and the confusion came because they thought it was Jesus. So according to one of the narrations, it could have been Judas, of, uh, Judas Iscariot, as they say, because if he was the traitor who actually led the Romans into the enclosure, then that would mean uh, when he emerged he had the face of Jesus and Jesus was taken back by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this man's clothing was the clothing of Judas and the people were confused. But if Jesus was there, where is Judas? And if Judas was there, then where is Jesus? And who is this? And how come the clothing is changed? But they got a hold of him and they crucified him. And that's the confusion that they had. The confusion. Allah says he was not crucified. That is there in the Quran. مَا قَتَلُوهُ مَا صَلَبُوهُ لَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ they didn't kill him, they didn't uh, murder him, they didn't, they were unable to harm him and they didn't crucify him. So this is Jesus, may peace be upon him. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, he was lifted up into the heavens and he is still alive. Jesus, according to the Islamic teachings, he is still alive and he will be returning back to the earth. When? Close to the hour the end of times, he's going to come back as a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this also in the Quran, wa innahu la'ilmun lissa'ati, speaking about him being one of the signs of the hour and the knowledge of the hour and so on, you know, uh, closer to the time he will descend. Um, and Allah says, the people will then see the reality and he will make manifest who exactly he is. So in a nutshell, Islam says that Jesus, may peace be upon him, was a messenger. He brought about the commandments, meaning so many things. He reiterated the commandments and he, he brought about goodness. He told people to worship Allah alone, uh, to follow the good footsteps, to pray, to, to give uh, charities, to fast in a certain way and so much more. And he warned people about the coming of uh, you know the hour and the end of time. And also he told people about Muhammad وسلم, and he gave them so much of glad tidings and also warnings. They persecuted him, but they didn't manage to hurt him or harm him. Allah raised him before he was uh, harmed and he will be returning. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good lesson and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us. May we always be from among those who search for the truth, look for it, find it, and inshallah follow it. Last point and, and I'll end with this is just a repetition and that is the issue of uh, the Trinity. Islam believes that the issue of Trinity was a total fabrication. That's what Islam believes. Islam says that's what we believe. So it was a total fabrication and in fact he, the, Allah alone, you know, the, the, the maker alone he is the one worthy of worship, but no creature is worthy of worship, be he a prophet or a saint or whoever else it may be. In Islam, you render acts of worship solely to the maker alone. You alone we worship and you alone we seek help from. So that is Allah. And that is one very, very interesting factor as well. So he was not considered the son of God by the Muslims, obviously and uh, through what the Quran teaches. And I've made mention of all the other points that I could think of right now in these 30 minutes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless one and all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.